and I'm feeling good. Angela says, you are correct. I should recommend atheist men to my gay male friends and swinger friends, but I haven't got an easy way to direct detect who amongst my friends might fit into those categories. Nevertheless, I'll try to insert the meme into conversations. <laughs> I was joking a bit about guys always thinking they are right. Men tend to state opinions as facts and to have conviction even when it is unwarranted. See President Bush as, as an example. Whereas, whereas women tend to state facts with qualifiers like I think, e.g. I think pi is closer to 3.14 than to 3.15. Now, excuse me, Angela, but I notice that you didn't say that you think men tend to state opinions as facts more than women. <laughs> Got any statistics to back this up? Just asking. Uh, I can get away with this kind of shit now because we don't have a female guest in the studio today. Uh, I'm, and, of course, I'm, I'm mostly joking here, but... Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> it's working. <laughs> Who was there? Uh... She goes on, I think it was Matt who said you can neither prove or disprove life after death, and Jeff said there was more evidence for the latter, no life after death, whereas Matt said there was no evidence for either. I concur with Jeff. Here's why. We have lots of evidence that humans have been inventing invisible and measurable entities for eons. Gods, souls, ghosts, angels, sprites, hobgoblins, thetans, succubi, demons, etc. We have evidence that such things are due to delusions, misunderstanding, lies, scams, confabulations, illusions, extrapolations, mental illness, confirmation bias, indoctrination, etc., at least some of the time. But despite eons of belief, there is no measurable evidence for any kind of consciousness outside of a living brain. No measurable evidence for God, souls, fairies, thetans, nor incubi. And uh, I notice, Angela, again, you don't say you think there I that there isn't any evidence, but I'm going to let you off the hook on this one, because I quite agree. I'm not letting her off the hook, because she says she agrees with you, and then everything she writes agrees with me. Read that last sentence that she wrote. But despite, uh, but despite eons of belief, there is no measurable evidence for any kind of consciousness outside of a living brain. And there's no measurable evidence against it. it don't I don't need agree measurable it. evidence I, against things for... No, there is a... No, she just... Matt, she just got through stating her evidence against it. We have evidence that such things are due to delusions, misunderstanding, lies, scams, confabulations, illusions, blah, blah, her whole laundry list. She just said that. That is... That, and that's true. It, it's. I agree. At that least the most, in at least in some cases, I agree that the most reasonable assessment is that there is none, and I would agree that that is the default position. But there's two different things, in much the same way that uh, I I don't believe in a god is different from I believe there is no god. There's a difference between saying there's no evidence for life after death, right. and there's evidence against life after death. Absence of evidence isn't abs evidence of absence, although it can lead you to a reasonable conclusion. And my only statement was that for somebody who says there's no such thing as life after death, there's not evidence to support that, even though I would agree it's the default position and the one that seems most reasonable. The, 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 the specific thing that this is all about is whether the, there is an equal total lack of evidence or whether there is a preponderance of evidence on one side or the other. Is that correct? The original statement mm -hmm. was that the evidence for life after death and the evidence against life after death are equivalent, because okay. there's none and, for or against. And, and what she is saying is that the life after death, right, spirits, falls into a category of a bunch of other things, in, in, invisible, immeasurable entities, for which, at least in some cases, we know those were made up. Right, but you, 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 that's a fallacy to use the one case as an argument for everything. I'm I mean, not it, using it as an argument for everything. Well, I, all I'm doing is saying there is, right there, is some evidence no. against... Sure. The, you're, you're, it's like saying everybody's wallet is empty and holding up one empty wallet 
and saying, look, there's at least one example of No, it. it's like this. It's like saying, wallets contain money. And you open up only... Uh, wallets can contain money. But and opening up one wallet and see, showing that there's money you're in You're already one modifying wallet. the argument by putting no, in not. possibilities I? of can. can. We're not talking can, about the possibility of life after death. We're talking about two statements that are mutually exclusive. There is evidence for life after death. There is evidence against life okay. after death. Okay, uh, uh, I'll reformulate it. I'll reformulate it. Here's, here's my argument. There might not be any money in Matt's wallet. Right? Okay. Now... In order for that to be true, it has to be possible for a wallet not to contain any money. No. It has yes, to be, it, can, yes no, it does. I, I, I understand that. But you're going from the specific now back to a general. Because your statement was about Matt's wallet. And the only, the only way to verify that is to open Matt's wallet, not somebody else's wallet. I, Opening somebody else's wallet is a complete red herring. Until you actually open my wallet, you haven't demonstrated for or against whether or not there's money in my wallet. And that is my argument. I agree on the default position. I agree on where all of the evidence leads us. But when we're talking about how to phrase the issue to say that there's evidence against life after death and not evidence for life after death is wrong. There's neither. We don't know anything about what happens I, I, after. Just, it's I'm, conjecture. If you can use the <laughs> argument of, of false claims about spirits and things yeah. as evidence in favor of the proposition that there is no life after death, yeah. then it should be equally reasonable for somebody to use the ubiquitous human belief of life after death and seeing ghosts in houses as equivalent evidence for life after death. And my point I is don't that they're think both so. fallacious. No, no, I don't think so. Because uh, in one case, you're pointing at a belief, right? Which is just the, that's just the attitude. Right. That's, that's clearly not evidence of anything. And right. in the other case... You're looking at actual examples. This is a thing human beings do. Human beings make up shit like this. Well, and 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 I want to and I want to make it clear. I think that that what you're doing is you're inflating the the you know how what I mean when I say that there's some evidence. In I think that you're you're. Make, you're making it sound like I'm trying to make the entire case that there's conclusive evidence, and I'm way not. No. You're saying that it doesn't count at all? That's I not what I said. What do, I you, said, what do you mean? I said it doesn't count as evidence for that specific proposition. Okay, there's oh, a yeah, I'm only talking about my specific proposition. And, uh, and I'm saying only there's some evidence. Circumstantial, sure. But I'm making some the same evidence. argument. I'm making the same argument that James Randi and Shermer and lots of other skeptics make, and that is, um, like for instance, somebody has they see a ghost in a haunted house, or they claim the house is haunted. They think they have a ghost. They they've, they have this experience, whatever. Um, until that evidence is verified, it's just anecdotal crap. Okay, but if we go around and expose everybody as a hoax, every one of those claims as a hoax so far. Yes, that's a bulk of evidence that the reasonable position is to deny or uh, not accept the proposition that ghosts exist because we don't have evidence for it. But it's not actually evidence, against, evidence in favor of the proposition that ghosts don't exist, which is why when Randy talks about Uri Geller, he says if Uri Geller is bending spoons using his brain, then he's doing it the hard way. And it's why the Million Dollar Challenge and all of these other propositions keep saying, we're not saying that this stuff is impossible. We're actually out there hoping, maybe looking, you know, to, see, right. to see some of it happen. Um, but it's a difference between... It, so it sounds like you're saying, though, it sounds like what you are now saying is that there isn't positive evidence that there's no life after death. Correct. But there is n some maybe only a little, maybe only circumstantial evidence, negative evidence, that there is life after death. Is that what you're saying? That, that's pretty much yes. what you just said. That's what I've been saying since the get-go. Well, I consider that a, uh, um, a kind of not terribly important distinction. You well, got two propositions. Kidding. You got two propositions. Hang on. You got two propositions, right? 
you say the evidence for each is equal, and then you say, oh no, except for this one, it's got some circumstantial negative evidence. No, no. Where's some circumstantial negative evidence that, that consciousness happens in physical brains? If there isn't some negative circumstantial evidence that consciousness only exists in physical brains, then it's not equal.